He never lied. He always told the truth. When he spoke, he chose his words. They were actually chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but he took his time. He spoke very clearly. Never did anyone have to say, huh? <laughs> Honestly, sometimes when we speak, we speak in such a low tone, you know, we speak. That shows a complex mind. Sometimes, not all the time. Sometimes you're just lazy. But sometimes it's a complex mind. I know, I recall learning the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu of a handshake. It's a nice, solid handshake. You know, you just below your thumb, this part here meets the, the same part of the other person and it actually plugs in and you grip it and you shake it and you look at the face and you break into a little smile and you say, Assalamu Alaikum. That's the proper sunnah. And then you have people giving you the two fingers. Have you seen that? <laughs> it's like they don't want to shake your hand at all. Where are they going to be loved by anyone? You know, they just do this and next thing it's out. Shake it, shake it properly. Don't worry, the fungus on their hands is not going to come to you. <laughs> it's a fact. This is something he says, greet the people. That's what he said. He greeted with a smile. He, he was a person who used to smile often at the people such. And it is reported that he was absolutely free from hypocrisy. So much so that when he was sad, you could see it in his face. It wasn't hidden. He was sad. You could see I've just upset him because it was on his face. With us, we so hurt him. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, you there and you want to bash the person, but you haven't managed to say anything. Let them know, you know, sister, I'm hurt. What you said, what you did is bad. I'd rather sort out the mess than to let it grow as a hypocrite. Wallahi, we let the things grow like hypocrites. And the women are not the only ones. It's seeped into the men, honestly. We smile at each other and we hug each other and there's a dagger. You know, we're gone. I can imagine it. It happens. And these are plastic smiles that cause hatred in the ummah. Don't let it be. I'd rather confront a person who's a brother of mine. Brother, I love you. I care for you. You are a human being. You're a Muslim. You are my brother in faith. I really have a lot of respect for you. But I would just like to clarify this one point. It's a point that hurt me. Perhaps you have a clarification. They may not like it, but they will appreciate it long term. That was the messenger. He didn't mind. He told people. Similarly, when he was happy, you saw it on his face. The hadith says, Kana ida surra istanara wajhuhu ka'annahu qita'atu qamar. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Amazing. When he was happy, his face lit up as though it was a piece of the moon. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was so happy. You could see it. And then he had another quality. The Sahaba radiallahu anhum say, La yahsabu jalisuhu anna ahadan akrama alayhi min. This is difficult for us to do. Do you know what it means? It means those who were seated around him at any time and his companions, none of them felt that there was anyone else more loved than they were to him. They all felt the same. So he gave them importance. He loved them. He made them feel so loved that each one of them thought, I'm the one he loves the most. That's what it is. Subhanallah. This was a gift. But can't we try? Subhanallah. You don't have to actually get to that level. You won't be able to. But at least be genuine with people. Learn to love. Learn to appreciate the good in others. We will be different. We have to. Learn to sacrifice. When the Prophet ﷺ instructed his companions to do something, he participated with them to fulfill it. Give you an example of the battle of the trench. The instruction came to dig a trench around Medina. He wasn't like the top shots of today, sitting in the background, letting everyone do the dirty work. No, he got in with them. He started digging with them. And some of them were showing that they had literally at that time when they didn't have food, they would tie their bellies with a rock in order for the belly to become, you know, compressed slightly or pressed a little bit. So they showed each other their bellies. Hey, look, I got a rock tied here and I'm still digging. And guess what? When they saw the Prophet ﷺ, he had two rocks tied. Subhanallah, subhanallah. Amazing. He was a man and he didn't mind. He worked with them. He participated. So if you want to be endeared to the people, learn to understand them. Learn to participate with them. Do you know what he speaks? What he says regarding those who worked, those who were servants. He says, Ikhwanukum khawalukum. These servants of yours are your brothers. Don't forget, they are your brothers. And Ikhwan here refers to brothers and sisters because in the Arabic language it's called Taghlib. Taghlib meaning you use one gender or referring to both. So these servants are your brothers and sisters. 
Allah has placed them under your authority. So whomsoever from amongst you, if your brother is under your authority, he should feed them with the same food that he eats. And he should clothe them with similar clothing to his. And he should never ever, or he says, you should never ever burden them with something that is too difficult for them to fulfill. If you really have to give them a task that is very hard for a person to fulfill, you get up and help them do it. Now that type of instruction, he was so loved, so loved even by the people who were serving him. Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu was a young boy when his mother came with him and gave him to Muhammad sallallahu as a servant. He says, Wallahi, khadimtu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa ashra sinin. I served the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for 10 years. I was his servant. How many years? 10 years. Think about people at home, helping hands, those who assist you at home. 10 whole years. He says, Fama qala liya uffin qattu. Not once. Did he make a bad expression or a sound? Never. Negative. You know, mm. we call it the TSE sound back at home, which means, have you heard that sound? You know, they say, I'm sure this part of the world knows what I'm talking about. But that's what it is. He never did that. There in the Arab Peninsula, they call it oof. You say oof. That means it's, it's as bad as that. وَمَا قَالَ لِيَ not once in 10 years did he say for something I did. Why did you do this? He would correct it himself and carry on. With us, forget your servants, your spouse cooks for you, mashallah, brings the food for you. Every day it's a story. Allahu Akbar. May Allah forgive us. So this was the Prophet ﷺ. He was considerate, compassionate. He loved the people. He had so much of care for them. These were some of the qualities that we lack today. And yes, one might argue these are prophetic, but no, the level upon which they are may be prophetic, but the teaching is for us all. It's quite simple. So I hope that we too, you know, become people who are considerate of others. We have hope in others and we are hard on ourselves. It's a sacrifice. To be a person who's loved, you need to be a person who sacrifices. You need to be a person who tries. You need to be a person who's upright, earning the closeness of Allah. I can give you one hadith that brings tears to the eyes. Listen to it. Muhammad sallallahu says, Inna Allaha idha ahabba abdan nada Jibreel. Fayaqulu ya Jibreel, Inna Allaha yuhibbu fulanan fa'ahibba. When Allah loves a person, Allah calls Jibreel. And Allah says, Oh Jibreel, Allah loves so and so. So you too love him. So Jibreel begins to love that person. And he calls out to the rest of the angels, Oh angels, Allah loves such and such a person on earth. You all love them too. So they begin to love them and they descend upon the earth with the love of that particular person. Subhanallah. And this is why we say, Ya Allah, you know, we say, May Allah love us. Oh Allah, love me. I love you. Subhanallah. We say, I love Allah, I love Allah. But we ask Allah, Oh Allah, you love me too. Because if Allah loves you, there's nothing more you need. And the love of Allah does not mean you're going to have everything thrown at your feet. No. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was the most beloved to Allah. What did he have? He went through more difficult times than any one of us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us with a few of these qualities. The Prophet ﷺ never raised his voice in a derogatory manner, you know, shouting, screaming. He was never vulgar. He, he was never ever saying hurtful things. With us, we are vulgar and hurtful every single day. And then we're wondering why is it that no one likes us, no one loves us and so on. You want to earn this? Go and study the seerah. Go and study the sunnah. Take a look at the qualities. When we say the way he spoke, the words he used, wallahi, just to think for a moment, this is what the Prophet, peace be upon him, taught. This is what he lived by. He was upon the highest level of contentment ever. Where are we? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us contentment and may Allah open our doors. Jazakumullah khair.